All right. So the electric force um, has a magnitude and a direction. So here you can see the equation for the electric force. You will see a couple different um, formulas. One is Q1, Q2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So this Coulomb constant is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. I personally like the one involving the Coulomb constant because I don't have to plug in four different number, three different numbers when I'm doing simple problems. And also it's a little easier to work with, um, but both are actually true. Um, you can use either form. Um, and then um, when you have, so I've written this as a scalar, frankly, because it's hard to write vector equations in um, in open office for presentations. So I um, figured I'd just write the magnitude. When you have, uh, if you look at the sign of this um, of this magnitude, if the sign is negative, then the force is attractive, and if it's positive then the force is repulsive. So if you have, um, if both charges have the same sign, then the force is positive. The, the force is pushing them away. If the, if the charges have opposite signs, the sign of the force is negative. It's pulling them together. And if I were to write this in full vector form, I put my little vector here. And then um, this is, um, going to be, I would have a negative and then r hat, where r hat is the vector between the two. So um, if, I, if I look at this first case, where um, both q1 and q2 are negative charges, so in that case, the vector from q1 to q2 is in this direction, um, and that's why I have to have this negative sign there. Um, so um, my vector for the force of one on two, and I can even add some fancy subscripts. So the vector from one to two. So the, the force from on one from two is going to point in the opposite direction of our hat as you can see right here. And then you can switch the subscripts and talk about the force of um, the force of two on one. And when you do that, your um, so if I am careful about my subscripts, this is the um, unit vector from one to two. The unit vector from two to one is in the opposite direction. I draw an arrow from two to one. Um, and I again have a negative sign. I wanna go in the opposite direction of that unit vector. And um, then I see that my net force is in this direction. I can do the same exercise for the uh, for a positive charge and a negative charge so now my unit vector from one to two is in this direction the two charges have this have opposite signs so my vector version of the force says that the force is in this direction and then here my unit vector from two to one is in this direction. And again, the signs of the two charges are opposite. So the net force is in the same direction as the unit vector. And if you think about what's going on in an atom, um, now you, as a, if you could think about an electron as a point particle, 
and you cannot, but that's out of the scope of this class. So if you could think of an electron as a point particle, um, you would you can model your nucleus as a big clump of positive charge in uh, with a very small uh, area volume. So this is your nucleus, and then you've got this little electron floating around. If you use our vector version of the force, um, the force on the electron is, I draw an arrow from the, the unit vector from the electron to the nucleus is like this. The charges are opposite. So the force is um, towards the nucleus. And I could draw my electron here and it's going to point toward in the unit towards it's going to point in the direction of the unit vector which points towards the nucleus so inside of an atom the electric force is always going to um, point uh, on the electron is always going to point towards the nucleus now when you start adding up the forces from multiple different charges you have to use the um, superposition principle, which basically says you add all of the forces. So um, if you have some charge right here, and you have in this figure eight different um, charges acting on it, each of those different charges ha um, has their own uses ha exerts their own force on um, on the charge. So here, all of the blue ones are negative and all of the red ones are positive. So if we start drawing what the forces look like, um, you're given the distance between, uh, so the distance between the two different, um, the two different charges and the larger the distance, the smaller the force. So if we draw, um, this first force from Q2 on our test charge, capital Q. So the force is going to point away from big Q, and it's going to be a large force because that's a very close charge. And all of the positive charges are going to point away along the path directly. So the unit vector connecting, uh, the unit direct vector pointing between the two charges. And the farther away the, um, the charge, the smaller the force. And I'm gonna try to draw these, if not exactly to scale, at least with the right relative, you know, some indication of the relative amplitude. And now all of the negative charges are pulling Q, big Q towards them. So this guy, let's see, this is our closest. So this is going to be a large force. Oh, but I did screw it up because it looks like Q2 is a little bit closer. So I want this arrow to be a little bit smaller than the other one. And then this one's going to point in that direction. and this one's going to point in that direction. So what you would have to do, now these are all acting on this point right here. I drew them at the object that, it, that is exerting the force because it's easier. But if I actually wanted to figure out what the net force was, I would have to add them up all together. Let me see if I can draw something up. Oh. Just a second, if I can draw something that vaguely resembles what um, the net forces are. So I would have to add this is from Q2 and then Q7 and Q8 and Q4 and Q one the color coding now doesn't really mean anything 
except it's telling me what the sign of the object providing exerting the force is but you're going to add all the forces anyways so i would say if we were to add up you would have to graphically add these and you can see that there's two big dominant ones eyeballing it i think we're going to move the net force is something like that but you would have to um, either break it into components um, or you could put the arrows from tail to tail but i didn't really draw these to scale anyways because actually if i tried to draw them to scale because the force drops off with one over r squared you would find that the two most dominant um, forces are the ones from charge two and charge three, and almost everything else is going to be basically negligible. So that's how you add up the net force, um, and you will have to do a few, at least a few different exercises implementing simple problems.